Hello, welcome back to this week's market update. Today is Monday, September 30th, end of the third quarter. And with that, we will jump right in. Last week marked the last full week of September. And so with that, we saw stocks rising. The Nasdaq Composite up 0.8% on the week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 0.45% on the week. The S&P 500 also up slightly 0.3% on the week and then the Barclays Aggregate Bond Index down slightly about 0.2% of a loss on the week. Heading into this week's economic news, we had the PCE inflation report come out on Friday last week for the month of August, which is the Fed's preferred measure of inflation. It came in lower than expected at 2.2% annual inflation on that headline number. And then when you exclude food and energy, core PCE came in at 2.7%. So you can see significant progress continuing to be made from the height of inflation here. Then when you break it down by goods and services, you can see there is continuing to be a great disparity. So early on in this inflationary period, we had a lot of the inflation coming from goods because supply chains were highly disrupted from the pandemic. Now it has shifted to services and has been that for quite some while, where goods are actually down in price almost a percent from a year ago, while services are up almost 4% from a year ago. So very interesting here. And then we will shift gears into personal income in the next slide. Within the PCE report, we also get some great data on personal income spending and savings for the same month. And so looking at August here, both income and spending rose 0.2% in the month. So quite modest compared to the prior months here, but many of these months included months where spending outweighed income which led to declines in the personal savings rate. August personal savings rate came in at 4.8%. However, this came as a lot of the previous months were revised upwards. So we'll take a look at that in the next slide. So as I was just saying, the personal savings rate got quite a few revisions upward. You can see this is last month's report for the month of July. The last six months personal savings rate was generally between three to 4%. And now you can see it was revised up to most of the months above 5%, anywhere from 4.8 this month to as much as 5.3 or 5.4% in February here. So a lot of moving up in the personal savings rate, and that can either be a good sign if consumers are just feeling better about the economy, they're able to save more, or it could be a negative sign if consumers are anticipating a downturn ahead and they need to be saving more. Now, what caused these significant revisions up in the personal savings rate? That was mostly due to higher interest income, higher dividend income that had not been previously accounted for. So consumers with savings are earning 4 or 5% on basically risk-free investments in money markets, CDs, short-term treasury bonds, those sort of cash instruments. And so that gave the personal savings rate quite a bit of a boost in this most recent revision. Moving along, there is a lot of talks of union strikes in the news lately. Companies like Boeing are seeing huge numbers of employees threatening to strike if they are not able to reach a compromise on their compensation packages. Now, this one here that you may have heard of is a new strike uh, affecting ports all along the East Coast that might take place on Monday, September 30th tonight at midnight if a contract is not reached. So this could have significant impacts for global trade as it includes ports like New York, New Jersey, Baltimore, Savannah, Miami, as far as New Orleans. So critical hubs for global trade. And if the strike occurs, it could disrupt hundreds and hundreds of companies that rely on these ports. Here you can see just some of the top U.S. importing companies. So it'll impact importing and exporting. But Walmart, Ikea, Sam's Club, LG, uh, companies like Amazon, General Motors, all sorts of companies will be impacted if this strike does occur. And hopefully that is not the case. But if it does occur and it does go on for days, maybe a week or a few weeks, that could significantly impact inflation as all shipping costs would likely rise. So very important to keep our eye on this in the coming week. But again, at midnight tonight, September 30th, the strike is expected to occur. 
if they do not reach a deal with their management. So very important to keep an eye on as this could really throw a wrench in the soft landing that we have in the economy currently. Moving along in our week with our more regular data, we also got new home sales for the month of August coming in at 716,000 new homes sold, which was up 9.8% compared to a year ago. So that's a positive move there. A lot of better volume in the last year. You can see this was a year ago here to a year later in August of 2024. Quite a bit of an improvement there in the number of new homes sold. And a lot of that comes down to falling mortgage rates as well as falling home prices. So the median sales price of a home is down 4.6% from a year ago to $420,600. So overall, new homes are just generally becoming more affordable and between mortgage rates as well as prices slipping slightly from a year ago, that has contributed to higher volumes in the month of August. Last but not least, we had the Chicago Fed's National Activity Index, which is one of our recession indicators here that we look at on a monthly basis. It comes out every single month. That came in positive for the first month after two months of bearish data here for August. So that was primarily led by a rise of production and income. You can see that red bar there. That led the index higher while the other categories, including employment, personal consumption and housing, sales orders and inventories were all either negative or neutral in the month. So ultimately that puts us at four positive indicators on our recession dashboard, two negative or bearish indicators and two neutral indicators. So overall, we are still bullish. It actually has become more bullish in the last month, but very cautious as there are significant risks like those union strikes that could seriously put an unexpected turn into the economy. With that, we thank you so much for tuning in to this week's market update. We really appreciate you tuning in each and every week, and we look forward to seeing you next week.